Yeah, Christopher Walsh. I am going to kill you, James Bond. Listen, nothing you can do about it. Listen, Django. We need to clean out the town before we move on, see? I don't stop to think about it. Oh, it's music, dude, the music. It was me, James. It was me. Quentin Tarantino, he makes me look at his feet. There. Spectre. Oh yeah, that looks great. Oh, oh yeah, I'm very excited about this. That looks amazing. I am, uh, I am beyond uh, stoked. I'm ready for a new James Bond. I feel like it's yeah. been too long, hasn't it? It has been too long. Which was, which is the one where he kept getting his balls hit with a big sack of uh, rocks Casino or whatever? Casino Royale. Ah, all right. No more of that, please. No more. No more of that. Of that. Uh -huh. that. That we know that works on him, and uh, so we should never do it again. Yep. Totally agree. Uh, by the way, it opens in the UK on the 26th of October, the US November 6th. Once again, those those bastards that we uh, seceded from and became our own nation and were free of for so long are now getting <laughs> movies before we do. So there's that. Wow, by like a week and a half or two weeks. Listen, Jeez. Mr. Bond. Thanks a lot. Jim, Mr. Bond, no, I expect you to die. <laughs> Django will not take off your gun. I do too. I think he is awesome. I'm mm -hmm. stoked about that. Yeah, I am too. Uh, there's some new jeans and pajamas on the market just in time uh, for you to stop farting. Here's the deal. A pair of pants that is able to rid the smell of your fart seems like an idea. Too good to be true. But thanks to Shreddies. <laughs> Did you hear that? Shreddies. Shreddies. All right. That sounds like a weird, like a bad, like fudge place you'd go to eat. Right. You know? Yes. What do you say we go to Shreddies yeah. tonight for dinner? Oh, they've got the best brownies at Shreddies. <laughs> <laughs> the UK brand has, oh, another UK story, has released a series of styles which include underwear, pajamas, and jeans for both men and women and can combat flatulence. Each garment contains a panel made of Zortex. Zortex. I think that's made up too. Zortex. Come on. Zortex. Yeah. Captain, the, the Zortex <laughs> leader is on the comm. Right. Um, that absorbs and neutralizes the odor. They can also, let's see, they also feature a carbon lining that goes from the waistband to the knee, which ensures your embarrassing fart won't escape. Dude, that, I don't know if that's what you want. Um, of course, the design isn't foolproof, so the brand gives suggestions on how to pass gas so that it is filtered properly. Luckily, the filter is reactivated after every wash. The uh, the photo. Yeah. Uh, on the on that uh, link right there, complex.com. Yep. Yep, have you yep. looked at the photo there? I, I have, and I don't like what I'm seeing. <laughs> I think that's frightening and a little too intimate. I do like how intimate. every, if you go to their website, shreddies, uh, myshreddies.com, because yeah. apparently... Somebody else has uh, shreddies.com. And oh my gosh, that's uh, uh, some impressive moose knuckle and camel toe on display there. <laughs> oh, wait, I got to go there now. <laughs> All right, let's just see. Just keep cycling through that slider right there in the middle of the page. And All right, so they can just lay around and fart. About. Great. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't need to. Oh, the next one. Dude, really? What are these models <laughs> like? What are we doing here? <laughs> Nobody does that. Uh, the point isn't to have it so that someone can be an inch away and not tell you just tooted. Right, have their nose buried between your cheeks. Nope, not smelling. But boy, that gust of air doesn't feel very good. Yeah. Also, I'll note uh, you'll note the gifts image down there. It's a picture of a yes. like a pig man. And, yeah, and it's a, a cat pig man lady. and a cat woman. Yeah, what's that about? Those are the uh, apparently the gift boxes for the men's hipsters. Wow. All right. I, I, you know, I can Stop see. Stop blaming it on the dog. They're saying. <laughs> I can see there. There are probably occasions where this m makes sense for someone, but I. Right. I just see, don't if know. If it about doesn't, this. Uh, you know, if it doesn't uh, combat the noise. Yeah. Because you can't do anything about the noise unless no. you have like some sort of muffling pants, which would be huge. But um, part of the part of the fart experience is the sound, and uh, I think there's kind of a mental thing that goes on where if you hear it. You smell it even if the, you, even if there's nothing to smell. Part like, of the fart oh. experience. I like how yeah. you explain that. Yeah. yeah. The fart experience. Yes. yes. Um, you're like, you're expecting it, and so when you're looking for a horrible smell, uh, you'll you'll find one even if it's not there. If anyone out there, see, sometimes people send us things to test. Okay. Mm -hmm. If anyone out there wants to send us a pair of these to test, Brian and I would be happy to don them and let you know how they work. Okay? It's too bad uh, we can't get them before Nertacular because I could see a part of the morning stream live mm -hmm. being <laughs> us wearing these well by about the time the instance panel starts it'll be time for that anyway <laughs> that's true yeah oh yeah what, what's the uh, first panel after lunch uh, i think it's that on the there first day go. yeah it's gonna be a bunch of wow and blizzard talk 
And I bet that Chris Metzen man, uh, he's he doesn't strike me as a, as the quiet type. No, he has things to say. Yes, and he'll say them. And I've seen him on stage at BlizzCon, and mm-hmm. I can you know, you guys ready? You guys pumped up? He, he claims he claims that he is always the most nervous he's ever been right before he goes on. Wow, you'd never guess. No, he's really good. Once he gets out there, he nails it. Uh, there's that. What else? Super. Oh, a, a super Earth has been found. Super, super Earth. Super Earth. What Super Earth's powers? Oh, come on! I wasn't even ready for that. Super Earth. Uh, able to travel around the the sun in two in two days because uh, <laughs> they go faster. But that would be half a day if it's faster. <laughs> Excelsior! I didn't think about this. I was gonna say two faster. hour two days would be less time or more time. It would take twice as long. That's yeah. totally fine. Um, actually, no, that would be about right. No, no, no. days would be longer if it was bigger yes. though, right? Uh, if it was bigger. If the Earth was, Earth was bigger, we'd have like a yes, it would forty go hour the, day. The sun would be a year, and if it went around faster. Well, it would go around the sun in two days. Right, but if you have... That would be faster than Earth goes right now. Like but if, if it you, spins if you, faster... If you could live on Jupiter, though, isn't it like a 50-hour day or something? Or like longer days, longer nights? Something like that? Because it takes longer to rotate around where the sun hits it? I'm sorry, I'm responding to Archeneer, who's who's saying that the Earth doesn't go around the sun in one day. No, Archeneer, but the Super Earth does yeah. because it's Super. It's Super Earth. He's just doing so. fake powers. That's right. So what's your what was your question? My what? question is Jupiter. What? Jupiter. So I had always heard if you lived on Jupiter, if you could, you'd have like a fifty-hour day. Well, sure. Because it takes I mean, longer to rotate, right? Because it's bigger. Yeah, I mean, you, you, a day a day is based on how much the Earth uh, revolves around its axis. Right, its own axis. So if you its have axis, if you spin around a single rotation, it's shorter for the Earth because it it's smaller. Rotates, rotates. Yes. Right, right, right. And if Pluto, if you could live on Pluto, your day'd be like six hours or something. Well, who knows? I don't know how quickly... Is that how quickly uh, Pluto rotates? Oh, that's a good point. It depends on the speed of the rotation. Yeah, it doesn't matter how big the planet is or how far away it is. It's how fast it spins. Dude, space is weird, man. Think about it. Think about how weird space is. Look it at, is weird. Look at you and me And it's still here. expanding. Is oh, what yeah. It is, it's still growing and there's things in it. It's great. Uh... <laughs> The NASA's Kepler mission has confirmed a first near-Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone. Sounds like something Kirk could talk about. Or something that uh, Reed Richards would discover, right? Yeah, the habitable zone. I just zone. discovered an Annihilus in the habitable zone. Oh, no, I can stretch shit. Uh, it's around a sun-like star. The discovery is the introduction of 11 uh, other new small uh, uh, habitable zone candidate planets. Mark another milestone in the journey to find another Earth, reads the NASA news release today. Uh, space truth more awesome than fiction. Scientists examine the observatory data that they've discovered 500 new possible planets around distant stars. Uh, let's see. This one is 60% larger in diameter than Earth. This is Kepler 452b. That's the name of the planet. Mm, that's a, a fantastic name. Yeah, and that's pretty big. It's considered a super Earth-sized planet, while uh, its mass and composition are y- yet to be determined. Previous research suggests the planet size of Kepler have, has a good time or a good chance of being rocky. It's 1,400 light years away in the constellation Cygnus. Uh, let's see. Interesting. This just gets my imagination going. Um, totally, yeah. I mean, basically, there's this this thin, you know, this uh, um, uh, window, right, where yeah. if the planet is too close to the star it orbits around, mm-hmm. then it gets too much heat and, and won't support anything. If it's too far, it's too cold and mm-hmm. won't support it. Well, won't support um, life we're familiar with. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this thing is apparently right in that, right in that, right in that uh, range, window. dude. Yeah, it could be, it could be life. Mm-hmm. It says here um, it has a 385 day orbit, which is five percent longer than ours. Mm-hmm. The planet is five percent further from the star. Wait a minute, how can that only be? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Three oh, 385. You said 835. Oh, I did. I meant 385. Did I say it wrong? 385. Sorry, 385. Or did I, days. Or did I hear it wrong? Maybe I don't know. It could have been. So, okay, so so pretty close to a, a year mm-hmm. to. Uh, so uh, sixty. The sun. So sixty percent bigger, but only five percent longer on the day or on the year. Doesn't matter. Oh, you're right. But I wonder what that means for the day, though. <laughs> like what? How long it takes could, to? Uh, well, couldn't we? Yeah, senses. couldn't we say all right, three hundred eighty-five <laughs> days minus three sixty-five. That number <laughs> divided by something right. equals per day. No, I, I mean basically you'd have to know how just what speed it, it uh, rotates. Um, somebody pointed out that um, it takes uh, Venus. Where is? Let me find it here. It was right around the time that people said that we sound like we're high, um, which I think is probably <laughs> a long time ago. 
Yeah. Let's see here. No, no, no. I mean, they said it when we were talking about this. Oh. Uh, Jupiter takes... Uh, oh, here we go. Jupiter rotates once every 10 hours. Venus rotates once every 243 days. So there's oh. a good example for you. So Jupiter actually rotates faster than Earth does. And Venus, like, it's almost, uh, you know, it's like a, a two-thirds of a year um, for Venus to have one day, one one Earth day. because oh, it uh, weird. Because it... it rotate so slowly compared to earth so all of the uh, the science fiction about venus colonies that's bullcrap they won't have any daylight man it'll or they'll two, have it'll take them well, two years to get any daylight right no no no. they'll have daylight for half of the time it'll just be a long time of daylight they'll oh, right have, it'll be permanent daylight for like they'll a have 121 and a half days of daylight yeah. and then 121 and a half days of uh, darkness that's no good can't do that but those sunsets man those those weeks and weeks of sunset are just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. Uh, it says it's only 5% further from Kepler 452, which is the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, that means, oh, let's see, it's 6 billion years old, that sun. That's 1.5 billion years older than our sun. Has the exact same temperature and is 20% brighter and has a diameter of 10% largerness. Wow. So it is very Isn't possible. It's amazing the things that they can find. Oh, the, just with the, telescopes the things that they can stuff? confirm from that distance, like knowing what temperature that that star is. Oh, dude, I, I'm telling you. And, we're, and the and the funny bit is, we are just scratching the surface. Hmm. Let's keep going. Space is great. Space is great. Uh, X X camera says Scott needs to disable links in your Twitch chat as soon as he can. It's getting spammed with malware links by bots. Uh, so I the Twitch don't chat have any way to do that not the irc yeah, yeah i'm not know. in there just turn off the chat that'll if you're in the chat for twitch just turn that off there's a little <laughs> button in there that says turn off chat turn yeah, what off. are you doing on twitch anyway yeah. go to go to frogpants.com slash live people yeah. come on we don't care about no bots although uh mew cow is supposed to help me with some of that anyway hey trump threatens to run independent mm. uh this is just a short mention but he says <laughs> the republican national committee has not been supportive of all at all and he's being treated badly by republicans so he is considering an independent bid which means brian yeah if he goes all the way because now he could because now now if he gets the right. the independent ticket there's a lot less competition for him to uh to to run as an independent right right so if he doesn't because the rnc is not going to appoint him and he's not going to get nominated by any other major party so he's gonna if he goes independent we got another ross perot on our hands mm -hmm. and what that oh, means is yeah. hey republicans you want another democrat in office for four years <laughs> guess what <laughs> have this guy usurp your vote yeah, yeah have him come in and split the vote because that's what's going to happen mm -hmm. if he has i mean i'm i'm still not convinced he even has enough votes to sway i i I think all this Trump stuff is mostly just pomp, it's circumstance, just, and yelling. It's just and, uh, pun intended Trumped up data. Yeah, it totally is. But, uh, you know, they're in a tight spot, though. Let's say he really does have a way to sway a bunch of people in their votes. Well, then the Republicans kind of have a problem. Because if they're not going to be nice to him and accept him into their party, which I don't blame them, he's kind of a nutbag, mm -hmm. then, then he's out and does independent. If they do embrace him, he'll be... This giant, it'd be like having a, I don't know what it's like. It's like having a kid eating too many pixie sticks trapped in a bathroom. Like, you can't keep control of him. He's not, he's going to say things you don't want him to say. He's going to barf on the couch. It's a bad metaphor. Wait, there's a couch in the bathroom? <laughs> I don't understand your analogy. Wait a minute, you don't have a couch in your bathroom? How weird. I love your analogies, man. We, we, I, I, they're terrible. I want, I want bumper stickers made of your analogies. They're terrible. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, it's Dan, Dan, the Tabletop Man, and some Twitter questions as well. Before we do, though, Brian brought music, and he's going to play it now. That's right. Dan actually fits on a tabletop. It's a, mm -hmm. a little-known fact. Yeah. Uh, Christina wrote in, says, Greetings from the U.K. Greetings from the U.K. Yeah. My partner got me listening to the Frog Pants shows. My favorite is TMS, obviously, a while ago now, and we've normally got TMS PM playing on a Saturday morning while getting ready for the day. It's his birthday on the 24th of July, and I would have loved to get him tickets to Nerdtacular. However, the airfare to Utah would have been a tad pricier. So, instead, would you please play him a song? Chasing Cars is one of my favorites. We requested it on the hospital radio station the day after our son was born last year, but we never got a chance to listen to it played as we were discharged early. The Sleeping at Last cover is absolutely wonderful and would make an excellent birthday dedication to my best friend. So, happy birthday, Simon, with love from Christina and Eric. Many thanks, guys. Signed, Christina. Very nice. Yes. 
Love hearing from our international listeners, mm -hmm. always. Uh, all right, so Chasing Cars by Sleeping Less. She made it easy for me, right? She just said, hey, this song, this artist, boom. And uh, this is something that just came out this year. It's a cover of the song by Snow Patrol. It's released as a single, as most of Sleeping Last, uh, Last stuff is, although they do have a, um, an album where they've assembled all those covers together. Uh, but this is great. It's Snow Patrol's Chasing Cars, performed here by Sleeping at Last. I love the idea that you can have this super sappy sad song going and then Brian is playing Tempest during it. <laughs> That's amazing. It's been a while since I've had all the uh the the stuff turned on behind me for uh for a show. So oh, I feel like playing Tempest right now. It's so fun. It is and fun. I finally, and I finally have my Vectrex in a place where I can play it too. Oh, right where is it? The, it's right there to the right of my Ooh, Tempest. I want one. Yeah. They're too expensive on eBay. I did they some are. looking. I did some looking. It was too much. Yeah, they're cool though. Yeah, I always wanted one when I was a kid. And uh, that deal you got, that was a hell of a deal. It was a hell of a deal with five games. Yeah. Yeah, I think you scored, is what I say. And I want to get that. I, maybe I need to look on eBay, but I want to get. There's a uh, a cartridge you can get that has um, a place where you can slide a an SD card into it, and so yeah. you download all of the ROMs for all the games. Yeah. And then you can actually just play all of them from one cartridge. Oh, that, and sounds, even some... that sounds totally legal. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fine. Sure. Yeah, yeah, how could it not be? Yeah, it's going to be great. Oh, that music. Holy, hold on a second. That either means there's a new Uncharted game out or Dan Dan the Tabletop Man is here. What's going on, boys? Oh, it's Hello. you then. It's not a new... I'll try not to be disappointed there's no Uncharted game out, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> How you doing, man? There is an Uncharted board game, I've, but I'm pretty sure it's terrible. Oh, yeah. The, those <laughs> tie-ins are often not very good, although sometimes they're okay. Did you ever play the big beastie, like, 900-pound World of Warcraft one they made? I actually own it. It's, it is on the top shelf up there. It's 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 something I whip out usually about once a year because, mm. you know, if, if I know the, the, the wife and kids are out of town, you know, I, I may just whip it out, set it all up, and I'll just solo it because mm -hmm. it's just time between turns is just too long to yeah. have, like— It's brutal. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it is fun. It's got some great mechanics, and there's actually, I don't know if I mentioned it like last year or not, but there's there's a uh, uh, an alternative way to play it where it's they call it the Diablo variant, where you just don't even use the board. You use some of the cards which have the quests on them, yeah. and you just kind of set up random quests. You take one of your guys and you kind of do run through the quest. So basically, all you're doing is getting loot and killing things. That sounds and all right. And it makes it takes a lot of the fun of the game, and it makes it just quick. Uh, that's I need to find out what that is because I think I wouldn't mind playing that. I also had the adventure board game thing they made so there were two and that's things supposed to be decent too i don't they there's actually two adventure board games i think uh one was a little bit more recent and that, that was actually supposedly really decent um i saw it at an auction last year when i was at a con but yeah. i didn't well i, didn't, I remember when that wasn't war, able to get it that wow one first came out it was like 100 bucks and mm -hmm. i thought that was a lot at the time turns out really not so much if you compare it to other board games <laughs> There's some, yeah. there's some big well, expensive board Especially for the games. amount of minis that are in that. And if you could see some people, what they've painted those minis, it's amazing. Oh, really? Oh, I should check more yeah. of that out then. Dust that thing off. All right. Well, yeah. hey, look, everyone. It's Dan Patrice. He's here to talk about the tabletop world. And today you're doing something kind of special-ish. Uh, oh, yeah. So Gen every Con's year. Gen around the corner, right? We got like a, not even a week until Gen Con. Yep. This time next week, I will be, uh, we'll be knee deep in, uh, in Gen Con because I'll have all sorts. Hopefully, I won't spend, have spent too much money. But tonight. Uh, I've got our second annual, uh, I guess it wasn't TMS last year, but we'll call it the second annual TMS, What to Buy at Gen Con. Yeah. I am going to give you $1,000 worth of games <laughs> to buy. I'm going to give you 11 booths right. to go oh, wow. to, to to get your stuff. So everybody, get ready for this. I'm going to do this in less than five minutes. So I've got an honorable mention. I didn't see Ice Worm in the chat. He might be in there. But I've got one for special for Ice Worm and Jury that I'm going to start off with. All right. Sounds so, like it might be wrestling right. related. It might just be. Mm. All right, Ibit, you got five minutes on the clock for me? I will put it on right now. All hey, right, Siri, so <laughs> start a timer for five minutes. <laughs> All right, boys, you ready for this? Yeah. Ready, All right, so go. the honorable mention goes to Gale Force 9 booth, which is going to have the WWE Superstar Showdown, which retails at 50 bucks. supposed to be a card-based card one-on-one. I'm not really a big wrestling guy, but a lot of people are. But this looks fun enough where I might actually want to pick it up. They also will have the new Firefly expand, up expansion, Kaladasa, 
Uh, they'll have it in limited. I just found out about this today. They're going to have it in limited quantities. I don't know what the price is, but it's going to be something you want to pick up. They also have a whole damn verse game mat. It's a 50 by 20 freaking game mat that's going to fit all the boards. The original game, Blue Sun and Kaladasa, it's going to be 40 bucks. All right, number 11, Red Raven Games, Artifacts, Inc. It's almost kind of like an Indiana Jones card game with some dice. Looks like a lot of fun. Great art in there. Number 10, Privateer Press. Go to that booth. Get the Undercity Iron Kingdoms Adventure Board Game. 95 bucks. Like Scott said, we love those big ass games that cost about 100 bucks. It's Steampunk, Steampunk Descent. It looks great to me. Number nine, go over to the Passport Game Studios. We're gonna have a game called Grog Island, about 40 bucks. What do pirates do when they retire? That looks like a lot of fun to me. Kind of a little bit of, got some auctioning stuff there, a little bit of worker placement. Number eight, Brother Wise Game, Boss Monster 2. Boss Monster 1 was a lot of fun. It's a, like 8-bit kind of dungeon-y crawl, really some good card play. They're gonna have a limited edition of Boss Monster 2, 32 bucks. Uh, I don't know how many they'll have, but they said they should have enough till Sunday. There's also a promo that's going to be there. If you get it, there'll be a coupon book. You can get the promo. Upper Deck Entertainment, number seven, Firefly Shiny Dice. There's going to be a, a dice game uh, based on the Firefly universe. Looks pretty cool by uh, Scott Morris, uh, a good designer. Uh, they also have the Predator deck building game. They put out the Aliens one last year. One of my favorite games of last year. Predator deck building game will be there. 60 bucks on that one. Number six, Portal Publishing. One of the hot new publishing people out there right now. They had our game of the year uh, from last year, Imperial Settlers. They will have Rattle Battle, Grab the Loot. 60 buck game. It's a kind of a family game. One person grabs all the dice people are going to use for the round and they just drop it into the box. It's got, you got a lot of chits uh, in there where you're going to be making your own little pirate ship and you can add on to it when you upgrade your ship. A lot of fun. Got to play it at Origins. Got to play preview. Picked this up. 60 bucks. Going to go really fast. A lot of cool dice rolling. Right. Tides of Time is also going to be there. 12 bucks. Two player. 18 cards. It's kind of like the next level of things like Love Letter, but for just two players. A lot of fun. Got some little drafting going back and forth. Drafting kind of like Seven Wonders. Uh, instant hit. This is going to sell out in a hurry. Get over there. Number five, Plaid Hat. They've got Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born. Like I mentioned a couple episodes uh, on here on TMSPM, going to be a great game. Next generation of Magic the Gathering. Everything you need in one box. It uses dice for mana, and you don't, you don't have to go chasing rares and stuff like that. It's just all in one box. Going to be the start of a huge franchise. The art is among the best. I think this might be the, game, the uh, art of the year, this one. Number four. Asmodee and Ludonot. It's got a game called Discoveries. It's basically Lewis and Clark last year came out. This is basically Lewis and Clark Dice. 40 bucks. One of the most anticipated games of Gen Con. Going to sell Two out. Two minutes, really 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, it's also got Mysterium. We talked about Mysterium <laughs> uh, in the past. So, number three, Cryptozoic. I love the DC deck building game. They're going to have the DC deck building game, Teen Titans, a uh, full box expansion, 40 bucks. They have ongoing cards in this one. Also, Spyfall, which we talked about, had limited quantities. Spyfall, awesome. Pick it up, 25 bucks. Stronghold Games at number two. They've got way too many things. I hope I can get through this. Lagrangia, space, uh, Survive Space Attack, which is like Survive Escape from Atlantis, but it is in space. 50 or 60 bucks for that. Lagrangia, 60 bucks. Among the Stars expansion, about 20 bucks. Really good. Played two players. Space Cadets Away Missions, 100 bucks. Scenario based game with tons of cool minis. Looks great. And the number one game. Get your butt over to the Blue Orange Games booth. New York, 1901. 50 bucks. They're going to have 50 e available each day. It's a new classic family game. Ticket to Ride with special element, uh, spatial element. Uh, I think Ticket to Ride meets Tetris in a way, but it's less than 60 minutes. Awesome game. One of my favorite games. Run over there. Get it as soon as you get in there. Wow, dude. How do you do? Well done. How was the timer? Uh What'd you get? How long? Oh, like there's still uh, a minute and 22 seconds left. Wow, that's pretty All good. All right, well, they're also going to have Days of Wonder. They're going to have the, Firefly, uh, the Five Tribes <laughs> expansion, so go get that. And there's also Van Ryder Games, Solo Game, Hostage and Goatee Shader, 25 bucks. All right, all right. sorry. If anyone, for all those who are <laughs> nice. on Nerdtacular or the podcast uh, sounder, what's it called, the thing in Texas? The podcast? Uh, oh, podcast movement. Movement, yeah. The, whoever's Ooh. not at this Texas Bow movement. <laughs> or at uh, Nerdtacular, wherever other things going on. If they're at Gen Con, how do they find you, Dan? Uh, well, I'm going to be on two different – I've got two different panels. On Friday at 11 o'clock, uh, I think it's at the Crown, I'm going to be on a panel called Gaming for Good. Mm. Uh, it's about using charity – it's using board games to raise money for charity. Also, at 2 p.m. on Saturday, we're going to be having the Geek All-Stars live show. We'll have a bunch of giveaways, a bunch of great guests. Or just find me, usually Hall E at night. I'll be playing plenty of games. Going to be just wandering around and hopefully not spending too much money. But that Sounds all right, man. <sighs> sounds all right. So, yeah. How you, get, you need a breather now. You need to go. Yeah, to I some... need uh, Here's I've got Harpoon today, the uh, <laughs> UFO. Just, I just cracked one open for the show. Big squeeze offering, a little shandy for the summer. Uh, very nice. Well, uh, thanks, dude. This is fun. We, we Every year we do a little pre-Gen Con hoo-ha, and this year's the first technically TMS one, but we've done it on the yep. old final score. We'll do it again next year because this show ain't going anywhere. That's right, boys. Uh, 
Have a good one. I, I, again, I miss you guys next week. I'm gonna. I'm real yeah. sorry I won't be at Nertacular next year for sure. Yeah, I'll be at Nertacular. No worries. Uh, I hope man. You guys have a lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, have a blast. Say hi to all the frog panthers you see, and uh, it's Geek Jock Blog on Twitter. Everybody, follow him. See sure. his exploits. We'll see you later. Bye. Okay. There he goes. Nice. There goes Dan. All right. Whew, that was rapid fire. That was. That was like, uh, it reminds me of the old uh, instance days, the oh, old yeah. rapid fire question instance days. Let me have a little surprise for you about that, about the Nerdtacular. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't oh, tell okay. anybody. Okay, I won't mention it. Nobody's listening. It's fine. <laughs> uh, we have some questions to answer, and it comes from this. And you can always follow me on Twitter. Bird goes tweets. Want to go bird hunting this weekend? Sure, why not? Uh, let's give you some questions that came to our to Ask TMS hashtag during the week. Okay. Uh, some of these more recently than others. Uh, I will share them with you now. Uh, let's see. Peter Fisher says, Who runs Lake Town? Rain or lot runs Lake Town? <laughs> it's not really a question, but we'll take it. No, that's true. Very good. Uh, Into the microphone. <laughs> Rain or runs Lake Town. There you go. Perfect. Nova Wheel wrote in and said, I live in Colorado. You live in the Utah. It's cold here 60% of the year. Do you have FPU hoodies? Where can I get one? No, but there's a lot of talk about hoodies being the next thing we start getting into. So uh, TMS hoodies, Frog Pants University hoodies would be cool. Nice. Some other stuff. So there's things coming. Don't you worry. Right now it's all T-shirts, though. Uh, Nate Ward has one for you. Oh, good. Okay. It says, hey, Bibby. Uh, I just got an Apple Watch. I was wondering what your favorite watch apps are. Um, You know, it's funny because I don't use any, like, the... I, I installed a bunch of goofy stuff on here, um, and I don't play any of the games. I play those games actually on my phone. Yeah. So it's kind of the stock stuff is what I use the most. I really like paying for my Starbucks with the... Um, uh, with the uh, Apple Pay thing, yeah, that's pretty convenient. That's you go there a lot cool. too. You're there on the. On I the don't regular. go there a lot. I'd say maybe once, maybe twice a week maximum, but okay. usually like once a week I'll go. But it's conven con convenient. It's convenient. You walk in there, you scan your watch, and boop, you're done. That's right. Um, let's see. Parcel is pretty nice because it alerts me when um, UPS is delivering something. Like if that day I'm supposed to be getting something via UPS, then yeah parcel will alert me yeah um the um uh, let's see yeah i haven't really used the sports stuff to track games i will though when uh fall comes and i have to track like football games for um some of the 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 pick em leagues that i'm in sure you, um, you do a lot of fantasy and whatnot i don't do trivia crack anymore hmm yeah, that game. Uh, the, 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 it's, the, it's the crowd written questions that, that kill me with the uh, trivia crack. Yeah, I feel like in your case, I don't know. I feel like you were going to not like that in the long run because <laughs> you know. just you know that stuff. You're, you're too close to the bone on the trivia world. Yeah, everything I use, I mean, I'm looking at this thing. Everything I use is more like, you know, responding to a text mm -hmm. and using the timer to let me know when something's going and I don't want to have audio. Um, what's really cool, and, and uh, our buddy Brett from Apple pointed this out, is if you're on a phone call and somebody else calls you and they go to voicemail, you can actually listen to the voicemail uh, off on your watch while you're still on that call. So you can, like, mute the call, listen to it, and see if, see if that voicemail is important. Do you have to hold it up to your head? To Do you have to put it up to your neck yeah, to your head? you just put it up like this and All just right. listen to it. But pff, that's nothing. No, that's nothing. Truly nothing. Couldn't live with that. I uh, got one here from Kyle who asks me, why don't you wear a GoPro when you go out running or walking the dog so you'll have video of all the crap that happens to you? Um, well, Kyle, because GoPros on people's heads and helmets and hats look s s freaking stupid. <laughs> if you were out there walking Rainer with a GoPro on a helmet. I'm not uh, doing that. There's no yeah, way. No. Now, now, the new GoPro Hero 4 or whatever is tiny. I may consider that like as a thing I could strap to my wrist or my you know, hanging around my neck or something, but I'm not wearing a freaking GoPro helmet cam. Forget it. What am I, Justin mm -hmm. TV? Come on. Yeah, I know. That'd be silly. Silly! Um, Alex asks, have you ever had a pedicure? Hmm. Have you? Right? I have, yeah. Tina and I went and got, uh, got pedicures together. Like, there's a spa real close by, and she's like, I want to get a pedicure. You should come with me. I'm like, yeah, all right. Aww. You know, I've never had one. Let's go ahead and do it. That's adorable. And 
Uh, what's that? That's adorbs, as the kids would say. <laughs> That's what I was afraid you said. <laughs> uh, is it totes adorbs? Um, it was it was more fun doing it with Tina than it was, you know, just on its own doing it, right? I mean, it was like sitting there and uh, having our feet in the bath thing, and then she comes out and she clips the nails, and then she kind of files them down and puts a lotion on them and rubs the soles with pumice and stuff like that. Um, not something I've had done since, but I would do it again. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly would do a pedicure way sooner than I would do like a manicure or any other sort of spa treatment. Yeah, I've done it. Um, Kim's sister, Sarah, does them. And she has a little setup for it and everything, like the thing you put your feet in. And it's got like massaging bath uh, bubble thing going the whole time. And she'll do the whole treatment and get your heels and just your whole, f- just do the whole foot unit. And um, it's very nice. I haven't done it in a while, but she does that all the time for a little extra cash. So that's pretty nice. And when you see her at Nerdtacular, ask her, say, can you do my foot real quick? And she'll say, no. Uh, next up is from... Dave Fuller, who says, what if this is one of those crazy random moments in history and Trump actually wins the election? Oh, my God. It doesn't work that way. He's not going to win it. He's not even going to make it to the nomination phase. If he makes it at all, it will be as an independent, and even then it'll just split the vote. It just doesn't work that way. You know, it's not now. Now, if he took his billions and bought his own personal army and did a military coup, well, then maybe (laughs) we could talk. (laughs) Because <laughs> that's it is a weird it it does bring to mind a weird like fringe world where Trump is president, doesn't it? I like, can't do it, dude. People can't say President Trump. You can't do it. Oh, don't man, do the White it. House would be all decked out with gold leaf and white, oh. like <laughs> it'd be like his it'd be like his casinos, dude. <laughs> right. The, the, <laughs> I'm gonna actually redo the Washington Monument as a big gold statue. Yeah. I think that would look a lot better. The people that did the last one losers. They were losers. <laughs> losers. Um, all right, how about this one? Uh, when you do your <laughs> Dwayne Dwayne Cole wrote this. Coil, when you yeah. do, when you do your coil, sorry. When you do your paperwork, do you stand or stay seated? <laughs> I stay seated like a, a normal second. person. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's paperwork. Um, I may have a standing desk, but I don't have a standing <laughs> throne. <laughs> no. Who do you think we are? Who stands? Nobody stands. Nobody stands. Yeah. Nobody cares. Uh, any recommendation for a shuttle service getting to Snowbird from the Salt Lake City Airport? Yeah, the shuttle service that goes from the Salt Lake City Airport to Snowbird. <laughs> I'd recommend that one over any other one. Sonny, if you're concerned about that, actually all you have to do is call Snowbird, and they'll set it up for you. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's really, yeah. really great. We, we did that for we – do, we're doing that for tons of people this year and did it last year and the year before that. It's it's not a problem. The only time it didn't work out is when there were, was a rock slide. And, uh, yep. Then nobody was getting through. And then there was an excuse to play Stevie Nicks Rocks uh, Landslide, so that was nice. That's right, yes. And actually, uh, uh, Cheesy G wrote a parody version of that. Yep. And we're out of the rainy season, so it's not even a, not even yeah, a thing this year. It won't even happen. Yeah. Favorite non-main character from a TV show? Mine is Oliver Babish from The West Wing. I also liked Oliver in that. Uh, favorite, thing. what was the description? Favorite what character? F- favorite non-character. Or he means non-main character, like somebody who's not the Non-main character. So TV I can't character. say Walter White, for example. No, but you could say... You could say Beaver. Tuco. Yeah, or Tuco, sure. <laughs> Tuco. Uh, favorite non Beaver. Wait, main Beaver, not Beaver. Badger. I said Beaver. Why did I say Beaver? <laughs> Badger. Skinny Pete and Badger. Anyway, yes, go ahead. Um, who was my favorite non main character from a TV show? You know, Sam, uh, not Sam, uh, Al from Quantum Leap, I really liked. I thought he was, uh, you know, he was great. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Booger, when he was on Moonlighting. You <laughs> <laughs> you only, you, that's pretty good you almost have to ha- do it on a per show basis though because now do, that right. i'm thinking about it i'm thinking oh well rizzo from mash and yeah, i mean uh banya from seinfeld sure <laughs> art from um justified um right yeah i mean there's so many uh although like, he's kind again of on per show basis he could come up with yeah it's hard for me to say my favorite of all time let me let me just let me put my head to that for a second um, I can't, I can't, I can't narrow down just one is the problem. Yeah, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I really like the lawyer character on, um, Battlestar Galactica, the Irish Scottish guy. Oh yeah. The one with the glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Dark glasses. Yeah, that's dark right. Glasses. Yeah. yeah. He was also in the second or third episode of Firefly. He's great. That mm-hmm. guy's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought he was a really nice addition to that show, but that's more of like a guest star thing. So it's not really a background character. I don't know. Yeah. Bert Cooper is the actual is the correct answer to that question. That's actually pretty good. 
<laughs> you may have that may be it. Um, it's really good, actually, oh, isn't it? <laughs> it is, and there's a bunch of Sopranos characters I'd put in there. Uh, there's too many shows, yeah. too many cool shows, too many cool characters. I mean, if you're talking like if you start throwing comedies in there, it's like uh, who's the guy in the office that just cracked me up that but was hardly ever on? Oh, Creed. Creed. Yeah. Creed was fantastic. Creed's a great example. Creed's amazing. Uh, take you know like um, Parks and Recreation. I thought um, well, Chris Pratt. Yeah, Chris Pratt. Although he came he became pretty main after a while. Yeah, he kind of did. Um, who, who's better? Who who am I thinking of on that show? Like any time. Jerry Grigich. <laughs> Jerry's great. <laughs> I freaking love Jerry. That yeah. show was great. Man. It really was a great show. Yeah, I miss it. Uh, boy, you know that Chris Pratt's doing well. That guy. Yeah. I think he's doing just, just doing fine. just fine. Yeah, it seems to be just fine. Uh, Rob says, "What was your first comic book, and do you still have it?" My first comic book was, I I don't think I re- remember. Oh, you know, I do know. It was a Star Wars comic book. It was the first one I had, and it was like in 1978 or nine, and it was those big format ones. Yeah, like tabloid format, and it was the actual trilogy being retold in comic form. That was my first comic I ever owned myself. I think. I'm pretty sure that the first one I owned was uh, issue number one of Spidey Super Stories. Oh, wow. Which was a series that um, was like Spider-Man stories for kids, kind of. I mean, it was still, I'm remembering these as being still pretty, pretty, um, you know, deep written, uh, deeply written as far as like, you know, isn't just, oh, I'm battling the scorpion over some hostess fruit pies or something like that. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was, um, Oh my gosh! You just—I hope you just revealed the new Spider-Man plot with the, the <laughs> they're working on. Hostess fruit pies. Oh, <laughs> love that. Um, yeah. What was that? Uh, um, yeah, it was it was uh, it was it was Spidey Super Stories, and I had I basically collected those all the way up until um, uh, shoot probably like issue 100 and then i traded all of those in at the comic store mm. for uh incredible hulk number 172 or whatever it is that's behind me here yeah, is that the one with is that the, first, the first wolverine, wolverine yeah. oh yeah you gotta get that that was yeah. a good move dude that was a good move yeah that's yeah. worth more than those super yeah that was like in the 70s ones. i was like oh, i'll trade all these in and then phew, I don't game. have the original Star Wars one. Like, I don't know what happened to it. It probably in a move or something got lost or my mom, who knows what happened to it. I'm sad that I don't, but Tom Merritt still has his version of that exact same comic and I'm mad at him for having it. Really? Yeah. Did he just pull it out at you know, moments? Oh, look here, you've got yeah. this. Not only that, Brian, right on the stream while we're doing Current Geek, he just pulls it right out of some drawer of somewhere. Of course he does. Oh, I swear. I, when I go to his actual house in L.A. one day, I'm going to be like, dude, you're a hoarder, aren't you? There's like going to be stacks of newspapers everywhere. There's going to be shit everywhere. I'm just sure of it because he's, <laughs> he has way too quick access to this stuff. It's insane to me. Oh, my God. I'm looking at all these uh, covers of Spidey Super Stories. So it was put together with um, between Marvel Comics and the Electric Company. Hmm and um weird yeah i bet you that's no that's issue 20 but i had all of these they did have that arrangement right because they had the spider-man uh, yeah, live action the, thing and um, right. cartoon did they have the cartoon i don't remember they didn't have a cartoon they had the live action thing and it was but but spider-man was completely silent in it oh, that's right he didn't say anything he was he didn't muted say anything and yeah. it, but it, once in a while it would feature him throwing a net easy over reader. morgan freeman or somebody <laughs> that's right oh, gotta love easy reader you've thrown <laughs> you've thrown your net around me again spider-man that's oh, not a here's very good. A great, here's a great photo right here. All right, put and it in. Put it in. That that image in the uh, that I just put in the chat room. I'm Issue 20 it. of Spidey oh, Super Stories. Oh, look at that. Yeah, John Romita, I'm pretty sure. Like, I mean, it wasn't, you know, they were no, there was no slouching. It was... Uh, Marvel Comics and the Electric Company. Doo, yeah. doo, 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 and then you've got doo, a little doo. picture of Morgan Freeman right there. Easy Reader says, this comic book is easy to read. Yeah. <laughs> It was there a, was there a spread in the middle where Spider-Man silhouetted head was up against Reed Richards silhouetted head words. and it would say yeah. Rye no Rhino like that yeah. it probably was none not of that okay it's too bad uh final question here let's do this All one right. oh this is an important moment chat room you got to help us with this one call uh Paul Cisimo or something is C S O M O okay Somo I don't know how you say Somo yeah Shomo Maybe it's fake. Anyway, he says, uh, <laughs> if you quote instead of playing a clip, so we'll give you an example. Brian, do the fish sandwich guy real quick. Is it too early to get a fish sandwich? Okay, now there's that version, or if I had it here, I could say, 
Hey, two hour get a fish sandwich. <laughs> we can play him there. And he wants to know, is it still legit to use the bingo space if Brian quotes it versus us playing the clip? Oh, that's a really good question. And I don't know if it is or not. Is there a is there a board, a body of, of you yeah, know? Yeah, Dice Tomato, I think, is the is the end all be all of um decisions on something like that so you'd need to you'd need to hear from dice tomato whether or not that's uh is dice that's tomato allowable or not. are you in the house dice tomato he's often I don't in think here dice tomato is but archineer yeah archineer is saying yes maybe archineer yeah says uh wow Ooh, there's differences now timmy cat says yes archineer says yes vector sector says no it has to be the actual event okay that's i think you know what i'm gonna I don't I don't agree with vector sector because if um you know unless the unless the bingo space itself says Scott plays too early to get a fish sandwich because uh uh if I say rad yeah. they'll count it. Oh they will? Yeah. Oh well if they yeah, okay. Because you, you don't know, do it either that one often. one of us says rad or yeah. shite or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's just it's the utterance of the thing, not necessarily that's a really context. good question, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I like it. Where Somebody post the full rules. I want to see a wiki on this. Uh, nice work, everyone. If you want to submit your own questions, it's easy. Ask TMS is the hashtag. Use it all week. Uh, there will not be... All right, so let's just give a quick reiteration of what's happening with the schedule. Next week, there's a Monday show. Mm -hmm. We'll be here Monday. Lots to talk about. Fun times. Good times for everybody. So we'll be here. Tuesday, no show. It's Nerdtacular Prep Week. Brian is traveling to, uh, Wednesday. That means yeah. no show that day. And Thursday, no shows because we'll be at Snowbird early setting up. So there's nothing going on that day either. Friday, there'll be the live Nerdtacular TMS Friday stream, along with all the other streaming we're doing. But that'll be at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on Friday mm -hmm. at frogpants.com slash live. And then Alpha Geek Radio and a million other places. So it's going to be all over the place. Um, so you'll get that episode then. If you're home listener and you're like, well, I'm not going to be able to catch the live stream. When are we going to get that episode? You will get it either Sunday night or Monday to follow after Nerdtacular when I get back here and have a chance to put it all up. So you'll get it as soon as we can get it up. There will not be a show the following Monday other than the one I put up. Mm -hmm. And then wait, you're going to Vegas that week. Yeah, so we'll figure that out. But okay. um, yeah, Monday we're Monday. I'm driving, so there definitely won't be a... Uh, yeah, you're driving and I'm recovering. So TMS that day. Yeah, We drive to Vegas on Thursday morning, so... So we should do a show Tuesday and Wednesday. We could do on Tuesday and Wednesday. We could even do on Thursday p.m. P.m. and do a p.m. Thursday. That makes sense to me. It may not be at the regular time, though, because it depends on when I get to um, I can when work. we get to Vegas. Yeah, I that's, can work with you. It's totally that's fine. the drive day. So Yeah, yeah. that's totally fine. We'll work that out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the schedule. That's the plan. Just want to make sure everybody was clear on what's going on. Uh, and most of you won't even hear this till tomorrow morning because I'm not putting this show up till then. But anyway, that's the plan during the week. Make sure you catch the live stream. We're going to try to take, we're definitely going to take live questions from chat room stuff and things like that. Possibly live Skype calls. That hasn't been worked out yet. Mm -hmm. We'll know more when we get there. I'm still right. not sure I want to even open that bag of cheese yet. I know. That is a uh, scary bag of cheese. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, but anyway, that's the plan, and I'm very excited about it. I think that's everything. Now, Yeah. we could, I feel pretty good about announcing the uh the, the the makeup of the four teams for nerdtacular uh frog pants all-stars we just leave one person out one spot out that that is in flux do we uh do you want to let's do that monday all right because mondays are a big last hurrah before the that's thing that's true okay cool so we'll let's do, do that monday. and by then we may have that one worked out that's, so we'll, we'll we'll definitely have that so one. so come out. back monday for that we're going to announce who the teams are going to be because you're not you're going to want to catch that you guys for sure it's mm -hmm. always fun. Maybe one of the highlights of the whole event, as far as I'm concerned. And then uh, I'm sure we'll have other stuff to talk about Monday because we're coming oh, yeah. into the home stretch, dude. There's no turning yeah, exactly. back. Exactly. What am I doing? I got to watch freaking film sack sometime. Oh yeah, no kidding. I got that right here. Oh, freaking P Punisher 1989 Blu-ray, baby. Oh, look at you. Ooh, this is uh, this has um, this has UK stuff on the back. Oh, find, yeah, find out if the version's any different. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. It'd be fun to get your perspective either way. Well, no, no, no. I mean, just want to make sure I mean, it's not region locked oh, oh, and I'm oh. going to be able to play it. <laughs> yeah. You're, uh, you don't have a PAL TV or however the hell that know. works. Right, exactly. Uh, all right. That's going to do it. Thank you all for being here. Don't forget, patreon.com slash TMS. Support the show if you want to see it grow and be rad. That's the way to do it. 
Frogpants.com slash TMS is our website. 801-471-0462 is our voicemail number. The morning stream at gmail.com is where you can send your email addresses, or your, your emails, rather. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Coverville, at Scott Johnson, at Morning Stream. There's a new instance tomorrow morning at 10, and there will be a new Current Geek tomorrow afternoon. We have a special effects artist coming on. Oh, wow. Very excited cool. about that. Yeah, it's going to be a That's great awesome. guest. And no film sack this weekend. I'm taking a week off, and then there'll be the new film sack next week. Okay. I guess that's it. Wow. Brian, let's do music. What do you got? So such such a weird week. I know. Uh, all right. Well, Stuart Cooper wrote in, said, Hi, Sate and Braze. On Thursday, July 23rd, that's today, I celebrate 10 years married to my wife as we travel the U.S. on our way to Nerdtacular. Oh, sheesh. Squee! She is the float that buoyed me as when the sea of life has tried to swamp me and the ray of light in my darkest times. Natalie, I love you. Here's to years to come. Michael Bublé's version of Just the Way You Look Tonight is one of the few covers he does where he doesn't just mirror the original, but puts a new and unique spin on a classic chart. Love the girl, though. Signed, Stuart from Australia. Coming all the way from Australia. Look at that. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it. Make sure you come up and give us both big hugs. Mm -hmm. Big Aussie hugs, mate. <laughs> uh, that sounded horrible. Uh, <laughs> how about a cover? by Michael Bublé. This was uh, from his self-titled album from 2003, originally done by Fred Astaire, although it's hard not to think of Tony Bennett when you hear The Way You Look Tonight, always associated with Tony Bennett. Mm. But... Um We're going to create a local video recording and audio. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, here goes. It begins in three, two, one. Listening to the instance. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the instance. This is the instance, and we're here. It's episode 416. My name is Scott Johnson, joined today by Dills. Hello, Dills. Hello, Scott. Hey, man. Nice to uh, hear you. See you. Have you? Yeah, nice to nice to hear and see you as well. Well, yeah. just here. But well, you know. yeah, here's here's I'll fine. Take one out of two. One out of two isn't bad. That's fifty percent. Glass half full, baby. Also with <laughs> us, Terp outlook. Terpster's here as well. Hi, Terpster. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hey, that goes against the rumors that you are somehow not here anymore, and I I, I don't like those rumors that you're not here anymore. Well, that, that I mean, admittedly Wait. they were true for a couple of weeks when yeah. I wasn't here, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last show we did, I was here, and this show, yeah. so you could argue that no yeah this week it's unsure. i would say patrick's never here oh my yeah. god what, what the hell, hell man here. patrick's never here yeah what a bunch of kicking it old school bunch of malarkey there um yeah patrick's still on vacation he's uh vacationing in fin or finland land of nokia see-through people honestly yeah. right so patrick's you know much like yourself scott self-employed yeah so isn't every day a vacation truly uh it's how here's how i look at it the last time i really took any time off i i kind of can't tell you so I don't know how he's managing it. <laughs> I, my guess is his wife has a really great job. <laughs> That's my thinking because uh, they somehow manage that to work out. But for me to take time off, it's kind of an, an enormous undertaking. And uh, I, I envy him, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, I already envied him I for his silky, his silky brown skin and his, his delicious voice. But other than that. Are you talking about garage or are you talking about Patrick? <laughs> a little garage. A little, uh, uh, well, a little less garage these days. A little more uh, uh, grand. Grand match. Yeah, I got. Uh, did you guys see the sneak video? Did they, Did you happen yeah. to catch it? Okay. Did you, Dills? Did you see the death? No. The, 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 the Isn't it going to be very much frowned upon if we talk about the ending of Patch Six Point Two yeah. and potentially? Yeah. After watching that video, <laughs> yeah. Just to spoil it further, I kind of feel like the end of the expansion. Possibly. So possibly. Is this the last patch? No. Isn't this the last patch? No, because I because my okay. So <clears throat> real quick, uh, to catch people up, if you missed it yesterday, I had a. A quick 45-minute interview with Corey Stockton. We try to do these from time to time, usually when there's a big patch or an expansion coming out. Corey's a, a, always a fun guest to have. And we had a really good conversation. Lots to do with 6.2, of course. And uh, we talked about 6.3, the potential of 6.3. And while he didn't give any specifics, I think you listen to that audio and you will come away going, oh, yeah, of course there's a 6.3. Of course there is. He's not going to tell well, you what it is. I always thought there was going to be a 6.3. And then I saw that cinematic, and it kind of made me feel like... Like, obviously, they were saying, yes, there's more to the story. Yeah. But it kind of felt like this was all we were going to have for now. Well, don't you feel like the thing that happened at the end 
that thing that went into the thing might yeah. come back as a worser thing. Well, yeah, but I didn't think necessarily in the next patch. I thought it might be like in a following expansion or in the expansion after the expansion oh, or something to that effect. Mm. Um, but I don't know. Who knows? I don't know because either. It was always said that um, there would be a more legiony vibe to the last thing. Yeah, you're right. But and the, and this does, and then then this has a more legion. Hellfire league. has that exactly. So yeah. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. We'll we'll see. I don't know. But Trick uh, ticket best. Make but sure you... all I can say is watch it um, <laughs> because it is the coolest uh, in-game cinematic in a long while. Um, the entrance of a certain memorable character uh, and the scale imposed. Uh, is just so wow. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Not before all this, or before this, I had kind of previously considered the thing you're talking about to be not that big a deal in terms of how I visualized it. But man, that's something else to see that the way they showed yeah. it. In game yeah. cinematic, people are really nailing it. So uh, we haven't spoiled anything. If you don't want to watch it, don't. We won't talk more about it. But the Corey interview, I think, is really important for those also who want to hear Blizzard's views on some of the recent issues with flying and dealing with. You know the uprising of fans when it came to the flying issue, or is it? What did he say? Give me a give me a, a, a spoiler. Basically, just say, describe how freaking hard whoops, it is. Or did he say like? <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he talked about nah, how cool. he talked about how hard it is, and he talked about uh, what they do internally and how they deal with this stuff and how big of a deal the flying thing was for them internally. Have they decided whose game it is yet? Uh, is it our game or is it their game? <laughs> well, see, and I asked him. I said, with all this all this uh, armchair quarterbacking that goes on. At what point do you say, you know, what is what is a compromise? What is caving to a fan's wants and needs? What is sticking to your own vision? Like, where do you find this? And the and it was just I thought really interesting. I don't want to spoil it here. People go listen to it. It was really interesting. But the bottom line was, you can tell that this has been a bit of agony for them. That they uh, are you know they're owning up to some stuff. Like nobody really intended people to just sit with their garrisons all day and not do much else. And there's a lot of people doing that. So we yeah. talk about that and. You know, it's it's a lot. It, this, in other words, this interview isn't just tell me about the wilds of Tanan and what we can expect as we walk through. We, it's not like that. It's it's a lot of. I think we we cover a lot of stuff that is on the minds of people, and I'm, there's some that are so weirdly up in arms that it doesn't matter what we say, they'll not like the interview. But I think those who maybe give it a real listen, they'll 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 get a, a better view as to what it might be like to be Blizzard in the hailstorm that is currently fans being upset about one or two things. So, cool. uh, worth checking out. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it'll be good. Looking forward to it. So it's um, out now. Yeah, out now on the speed. Uh, it. If you haven't heard, Corey's it. been with Blizzard ten years. Yeah, now. got so, a shield. So he get a shield. Yeah, not the that. not the Terpster shield though. Or the, no, no, exactly. The, they get the Lord of Honor's one. shield. Yeah. The less the less honored one. <laughs> I think after thirty years, there's rumors they might implement so the Sonorous shield. Yeah, but you think? Then you get the risk of people dual wielding shields, which has been long a dream for many a protection warrior or paladin. Um, and uh, I don't think that we'll see dual wielding shields uh, in Warcraft anytime soon. When do we so. get uh, Dills? When do your pants become the great reward for being at Blizzard? When would you have? Uh, yeah, some Blizzard pants would be pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. that's like what thirty years. <laughs> thirty years, years Dills yeah. pants. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you gotta wait for those. All right. Uh, but, and on the other hand, uh, Gerp's perfect arrow, dime a dozen. Find them every day in your yeah. thing. I literally yeah, get them just get as, them as a salvage gift. things. Yeah. 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 I really had a hard time selling my extra ones. I did. Yeah. I went to the dude and I said, "All right, I gotta sell these. They're just taking up room in my storage." And I had like five of them, and I just I had a sold guy them all. tweet me that someone was selling Sonora Shields for thirty gold. What? And I just, I've never been so insulted. That's a small margin on what a vendor will pay. <laughs> oh. It is hurtful. Yeah, yeah you're and... actually losing money putting those on the yeah. auction house because you got to pay the deposit. That's, That's right. the problem. Exactly. No, they were doing it in trade publicly, <laughs> even worse. <laughs> so even if you weren't into buying it, you still found out about it. Yeah. Harsh. That's about what my helmet cost to repair. Very, very impressive price you fetched there, Terpster. Nice yeah, work. exactly. Well, there you go. Uh... That's what once was a cool thing. Not That's so, what they'd say about me. Not so much now. All right. Not so much now. Let's dive into the news. Okay. 6.2 landed. Let's talk a bit about it. Uh, there's a bunch of story and Tanan invasion impression stuff that we could talk about, I suppose. I know that we've had various degrees of uh, playing it. Terpster spent a lot of time with shipyards. I've spent most of my time playing through the new zone and doing the quest hubs and stuff that are there. Uh, Dills, have you touched even touched the the PvP stuff? I know things have been kind of up. not yet, and I really oh. want to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, it's been there's been a lot of a lot of uh, griping about what's going on right now. I'm afraid but, to go even near it because of all the what? griping. And I know they've so, hot fixed some stuff, but man, it's. But don't you feel like I, I when I got to uh, 
to Tanan, as soon as I set up my uh, my little outpost, <laughs> it kind of felt like a don't forget about Ashran. Yeah. Well, yeah, though they give like you a portal to Ashran people. right there. Like, yeah. Guys, honestly, if you want to do Ashran, you can. It's fine. <laughs> At the moment, there's just this toxic group of people who keep playing it, and it's horrible. Yeah. But uh, if you would like to go along, maybe enough of you go along, and it's not as bad. Yeah. I Essentially, think... that's kind of what's going on. It's like, let's just get the people in there. The, so they have pared it down quite a bit, and now there's only 40 people on each side, so it's going to be a little more manageable as far as what's going on in each fight. But the, anytime there's going to be a bunch of big changes like this, it's going to be a little bit rocky, and that's just how it works. So yeah. I'm I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to go in this weekend and do a bunch. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, like I plan to play a lot more this weekend, so I will have by next week on this show i will have a, a well-formed opinion about this well what do you guys think about so uh, Corey, i brought this up with Corey because someone in the chat room asked it yesterday and the question was why can't we balance pve content and classes within that content separate from balancing pvp content and those classes and their gear separately isn't that how it was before, kind of? I mean, No, they always wanted it they, so that when you pressed a button, it did the same thing, didn't they? So they didn't want it to be that, yeah, you know. I mean, you know. right. they, they've they altered numbers and things in the past, and things could just get a little bit confusing that way. You know, I don't know if it's, I don't know if that's really feasible. Like, here's, you got this set of skills that you can use in PvP and the set of skills you can use in PvE, and then it's completely separate. We can absolutely balance everything. It, to me, that makes the game a little bit funky, where you're literally playing two different games, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm not sure that's a solution that's really viable, even though people but if you were designing, seem to think it really is. Sure, if you were sure. designing a PvP game now, you wouldn't build it like WoW. Right. No, so, no. Like, think think about the, the, you know, the really successful games where PvP is pretty much the only thing you do, and that's all the balance you have to worry about. And then say, now well, you got to run outside and go fight some fake monsters. Yeah. But that's why I don't know why you it's can't have a, like an expansion, like a PvP vehicle or something like that if you could design something that was and it doesn't have to be a vehicle it can be a character but something that has a limited skill set like a, a moba you know like you've got in in overwatch and heroes um that you level up over the course of the expansion so you, it's not like just having a pre-made you still kind of have some attachment to it like i don't see why they can't just take take a new stab at pvp and separate it from the character and its gear and make it like a thing that you pvp via hmm. like i would like to see that in terms of for the battlegrounds at least like i'd love when they were talking about uh, the dota battleground yeah like if you could have that where you jumped into a hero who had a set of skills and you could play that i mean that'd be great fun in mm, wow's sure. engine with with the kind of characters they have at hand you could argue why not go and play heroes and probably you probably should um <laughs> but some it of kind are. of feels like, um, you know, when you look back to the glory days of WoW PvP, which was probably before the introduction of the PvP system. Mm. So, you know, when you had your Terran, Terran Mill kind of big old fights, it was around kind of choke points in the in the terrain or awkward positioning between uh, Horde and Alliance that kind of just so happened to encourage you to cross paths and battles to emerge mm -hmm. and the, i don't think you know ashran's out by itself you have to go there to fight it was a conscious decision so that you know it's only people who want to take part in it but i don't know it just doesn't feel i don't know i it think it's a really hard nut to works. crack and he said as much yesterday because when i asked him the question he said you, you have no idea how many years and, and ideas and thoughts go into how do we make this somehow function and work these two things that are clearly at odds with one another, the PvP and the PV, uh, PvE aspects of the game, and try to make them cohesive, you know, be more cohesive is not easy. It's on the list no, of hard things, not. of the hardest things, perhaps. And I even remember, I mean, we all have short memories, but back in 04 when this game launched, it launched without any PvP, other than PvP, mm. like, you know, ganking on PvP servers. But there was, but no, there was no reason to do it past right. just being a troll. Exactly. You just sure. troll people, but there was no actual PvP. And what, what happened was, and it's as clear today as it to me as it was then there was an outcry people freaking out why isn't this here warcraft's history and lore is based in pvp these are rts games that they're in their origins why aren't we taking advantage of that i can't believe this is a, a warcraft game without any player versus player like there was just this giant freak out even in 04 standards and then they introduced it 
And, you know, again, mixed results. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. I feel like it's just going to be the eternal struggle. This is never going to end. Like, when no. will PvP be fixed? Probably never. It's just a battle. I don't I don't know how... Well, Halink is in charge of it, so... Um, he's got he it. Listens. He's got this. He's got it, I'm sure. Don't worry. Obviously, if you need any help, just give us a shout. Right. We obviously, you know, <laughs> Scott and I don't really PvP and Dills does, but I feel like Scott and I's opinion is yeah. probably more valid because we don't PvP. Sure. So how do you make us PvP? Well, this is the internet, right? We can say things about subjects. I think I am an expert any... because I have no experience whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'd like to, I like to criticize all sorts of things in life that I don't have any direct experience with. So I like to get offended on behalf of people that I assume are offended by something. Right. Oh my gosh, yeah. you fit right in, dude. You've got I don't know. Exactly. You got the I memo think they're going to make me kind of deputy in charge of PvP now. <laughs> You're going to be like, knighted. Wow. We need someone like you on the team who can be offended on behalf of people who potentially might be offended, but you believe they should be offended if they're not offended. Perfect. You've you've, you've nailed it's it. It's me. Like I'll, I'll say this, like I, it, maybe it was a mistake, put ever putting it in. But I love PvP, and so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait on them to make the changes that are coming. I'm not gonna sit here and bitch and moan like most people just go right into bitch and moan phase mm -hmm. uh, when something doesn't work exactly the way they like it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's like I feel like they've got a good enough track record, and I know it's difficult, and I know that it hasn't been perfect, and probably never has been perfect. But it's not going to be, it can't be perfect. You can't have both sides perfect. So, like, I'll get in there, I'll, I'll play it, like, this weekend, and I'll, I'll come back yeah, with a report. I'm curious. On what I think is actually maybe wrong with it, because I, I can't look at some of these responses yeah. and take them seriously at all. Yeah. Well, like, some, the, of the, some of what people are saying, it's just like, you're just whining. Like, you're just being a whiner well, the, right now. The fact that you're getting in post all these hot fixes will be good. Because, yeah, sure. um, you know, and that's the other thing we talked about. I, I really do think that they benefited from the new file system because it's allowed them to be quicker with fixes and changes. They can turn things around a lot more, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So they don't have to wait for a big patch. Or people don't have to wait for downloads. Like, it's a, it's a better world we live in for that stuff. And now it's just an issue of them chipping away. But... Yeah, I mean, you could say flying was a mistake, and now they have to deal with it. You could say a lot of things are a mistake, but now they have to deal with it. Yeah, well, let's 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 deal at least with they're it. trying stuff. Man. And if it's you not know? worth somebody's fifteen bucks to deal with it, I, I understand that too. I get it. Sure. If, if PvP was all you cared about, and that's what your money was going toward every month, and you would rather that be the strongest thing, and it's not working for you, don't pay Blizzard to to have a terrible time. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely within your like your right is to not play the game anymore if you're not enjoying it, and. Mm -hmm. It's you know Blizzard's doing what they can to keep the game fresh and keep putting things in, and not everything's going to be a hit. Some some are going to be misses, and I know I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of the PvP streamers have kind of moved on and stopped playing WoW, or they've started playing PVE in WoW. Um, but I I'll tell you this: they've also struggled to find something else that has captured their attention, yeah. like mm. WoW ever did. You know, right. and that's I mean you're fine though. Blizzard has you know they tried to build Titan to kill WoW. They had this kind of drive where they thought, wow, won't live forever. Let's make the thing that kills it so that we have that rather than let someone else do it. Yeah. And then they obviously found that that didn't really pan out for them. But equally, I think they've carried that forward, though, with the other releases that they've made, sure. where you've got Hearthstone and Heroes and you know Overwatch coming, and they're all kind of just trying to provide immersive massive entertainment so that but they give you that singular experience though all of those games they don't they don't try to do everything you know no exactly and i think that's what they've discovered is that now let's make a pvp game and let's make a twitch game let's make a really slow and steady game let's you know let's try and find games for everyone rather than try and build a game that just appeals to everyone like wow did when mm -hmm. it was released yeah, no, and, and WoW still is the game to me that has the most kind of universal appeal of pretty much like anything that I've played. I also think that there's a, a piece of them that goes, you know, by now someone else should have come up with the WoW killer if it was going to happen, right? Yeah. Like, mm. do you, you know, if, if at some point WoW gets killed, it's not because some game came out. Well, it's exactly. Because WoW just yeah. went away on its own. It's like, we, but if you we've look gone at Star past Wars, the point. You know? Star Wars couldn't do it. Elder Scrolls couldn't do it. You know, sure. these are these are massive, massive IPs. I mean, Warcraft was a big IP, Wildstar, but Rift. never been as big as that. Exactly. Yeah. And then you've had other, you know, lots and lots, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars put into it, billions probably collectively across all of them. None of them can touch it. Um, and so you can't fault Warcraft for, for being as tenacious as it is. And with the movie coming out next year, I just see a huge resurgence in terms of people who will discover and rediscover uh, World of Warcraft off the back of that. 
Yeah. You know, if honestly, if there had been an Avatar MMO after seeing Avatar, I would have tried it because <laughs> I was like, holy crap, this world looks amazing. Like these characters are great. You know, this this whole mythos and technology and whatever is really cool. Oh wait, I can get more of that. Amazing. If they had an Avatar book, I would have bought it. Uh, they probably have. I just don't know about it. Um, but I think that the movie will be more transformative than anything else. Yeah, yeah. and I, I just think MOBAs have done a thing to the up-and-coming generation of potential players of games where there's progression. Um, they, they've kind of stolen a bit of the thunder that that could have been WoW's or whoever WoW's uh, superior could have been. I just think people have cooled on MMOs generally. So you don't see a lot of things being announced. Like E three was void of big MMO. Yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah, they're they're now where there once was always a few on the horizon. Now there's well, basically Star nothing. Wars. Well, that's going, and that's true. Yeah. They had a big thing there. for that, and that's doing well. But you know, like Eve or had any cool of these movie. other, the, the, even these other games, they're fine, and there will always be these niches, which is great. I'm I'm just saying, done are the days where somebody gets up on stage and wants to try to say we are going to be the next big thing in MMOs. I think the next big thing was, is, and will ever be WoW for a long time. And and the future of MMOs may not look like this. It may look like a very different place with VR and something else. Like I, I feel like there's almost needs to be that kind of evolutionary Mobile, slash definitely. Yeah, or revolutionary jump in some way to take it out of what we think of it as with hot keys and third person perspective and a town to go turn your stuff into. You know, like we we've just done that so much. Yeah. Whatever's next is way more next than this. I, th I think we're just at a place now where, where, look, we've got PvP, we've got PvE. We're not. Neither one is going away to suddenly make the other one perfect. That's just not an option, right. and it never will be. So we're just gonna have to deal with what with what we've done, with what we've created here, and just try to do the best we can with it. And when they make changes, they're trying to make changes for for the better it's not always going to hit exactly i've like got the solution watching. that's the it's thing just come to whoa whoa hold on Ep uh -oh. epiphany Surf is gonna do you sure you want to just give this out i'm like gonna give show? it out for free hold on i got right. epiphany music for you hold you on. ready hold yeah. on here it is uh uh where is it here we go <laughs> all right go well, i'm inspired time walking okay <laughs> okay we whoa, go back no. to how it was hold on because nostalgia dictates that it was always better in the past. Uh, so you're well, saying, so, like, give mm, us a mode mm. where we can go back to older, like maybe like five mans or something? No, no, no. <laughs> go for back PvP. to those. I'm just saying. Oh, like, time know, walking so PvP. Exactly. People are like, oh, man, I, you know, Wintergrass was so much better than that. Uh-oh, we just time walk back to Northrend. Mm. What's that? The stone vault is <laughs> on your side. Wow. <laughs> Time walking. Yeah, time walking. Right. It's a thing. All of the dungeons drop. Anytime I anyone complains, and then you say, like, okay, fine. Well, we're going back to, to how it was. I hate to tell you this. It's in the game now. It's part of the patch. So I, I love your idea. I think it's a brilliant really? one. But clearly, like anything on the internet these days, if someone else thought of it first, someone turns out it. Blizzard did damn in this it. case. So God sorry. Yeah. Um, all in the fact, dungeons. I, I can queue for a random time walking <laughs> dungeon right now if I wanted. Yeah, to. No, it turns but I'm, out. I'm saying time time walking battlegrounds and PvP. Can oh, you do that? Yeah. well, you can go back and do winter. Like you technically can. You you can go over there. But it's not get, scaled. Get it's in not the queue. Scaled. Exactly. No. no well, and yeah. what I'd say is, I'd say, guys, you know, how we always said there was going to be flying machines in Wintergrass, yeah. and everyone got upset because there weren't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Didn't now. Know. Thanks to technology, we're going to make it happen, time walking style. Right. And then here's the twist: you don't, okay? You leave it broken. <laughs> you just you make the same promise sure. twice yeah, yeah, yeah. and don't deliver on it. And then people are still like they they don't believe they can't believe that they fell for it twice. twice. Yeah. yeah, shame on me. Bam. How it go? Uh, fool yeah. me once, shame on you. Uh, yeah, yeah. fool George Bush on him. Can't be fooled again. <laughs> I just realized I was doing the exact same thing he did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's good. That's really you gotta good. Yeah, same back here in Utah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's in Salt Lake somewhere. Uh, <laughs> fool, 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 fool me once. Uh, uh, can't be fooled again. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, I miss his. Have you heard the theory on that? By the way, no. this is maybe just a Reddit theory. No, what is but it? That he he knows the, the he knows the quote. Yeah. He just didn't want to release a soundbite of him saying "shame on me." <laughs> really? Because then everybody would like jump on that and use it. Well, I know those guys are paranoid about stuff like that. Like, sure. You know. Like he started into it, and I he was like, ah. That 
quip though. Yeah. I you don't think so? His synapses. He's a smart guy. I mean, he's a dumb guy, but he's a smart guy too. Yeah. You don't no, I mean, become the president of... by not being a yeah. smart guy. Right. No, you, you know have what I mean? friends who are at Enron and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Yeah. But you know, I don't know. I give him credit for at least having like a normal and in human intelligence. And I mean, the thing is, what I love though is that Americans looked at the British Empire and they thought, hang on. What you've just got this hereditary king yeah. that just like his son <laughs> then rules in his stead. Once, uh -huh. what's that about? Yeah, we, do it, with, easier, right? we do it. We do it with Senior Kennedys. Said to Bush Jr. Yeah, it's uh, not. It's not a new thing let's, here, though. Let's you, not worry about that. You had the Roosevelts. That was a major dynasty there. Exactly. You had the yeah. Kennedys. You have yeah. the the Bushes. Unfortunately, exactly. Jeb's and probably going to run. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see the Clintons mm -hmm. just to really polish it off. Yeah, just to say America, we get it. Okay. <laughs> You know, having this hereditary passing down of power, that's, that's not right. Well, no, but now now apparently like Bill's passing it sexually now. This is a, <laughs> well, exactly. this is a new version of it. He's seen, he's, he was like... Sexually Kennedy's, transmitted power. These kings back in England, you know, they got to do everything. ST, <laughs> STPs that you're talking STP, about? Yeah, STPs, STP. yeah. STPs. Right. Yeah, or otherwise known as Stone Temple Pilot. And but, thus endeth the similar. political <laughs> section of the show today. We're doing all Blizzard news and then segues into... Uh, segues into... It yeah. did 10 years ago. Journey politics. for the White House, exactly. Uh, 660 loot will drop in these time-walking dungeons. Terpster brought up. Uh, bosses will yield loot appropriate for players' natural level. So it doesn't matter where you are. I think you have to be 70, we, 72 or higher, something weird like yeah, that. Yeah, you pretty much have to be like uh, high enough to actually have done them, essentially. Right, back when yeah, when BC yeah. mattered. Or, yeah, whatever the levels were for those dungeons. But um, it'll scale for you. That's cool loot. It's some so nice catch-up. So what catch dungeons up. are currently available for Time Walking? Uh, you have the Burning Crusade dungeons, the oh, Alcatraz. Yeah, I think it's just BC stuff. There's like five of so, them. So the Architraz, the Black Morass, Mana Tomb, Shattered Halls, and Slave Pens. The Black Morass was Caverns of Time, yeah? Uh, It was in so Caverns of we, Time. Are we time-traveling to time travel? Yeah. Pretty much. This is time travel and time travelception. Holy, sh on holy here. shit! I didn't think about that's that. Amazing. That's cool. Somewhere that's above like us, exhibits like yo dog. Heard you like time travel. <laughs> somewhere, like, oh, somewhere wow. above us, a big van is slowly making its way into a river. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Dave, I loved Manitoons. They should do a bit in Flat Morass where he turns around and says, You're only 10 bucks for my face in Hearthstone. <laughs> and you're like, Oh, what? They Charles added promotion. new stuff to it. That would yeah. be great. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If they made references like that, that would be wonderful. Yeah. I love Manitoons and I was a big fan of Shattered Hall, so I'm uh, kind of excited about those. I like those, but then I ran them too much trying to get um, uh, Sethic Halls, at least for the for the Raven Mount. Mm. So then I kind of just, I don't like get it. Get a little burned out there in the. But maybe stuff. I like it now because it's you know harder. Sure. Uh, you can use old legendary weapons in time walking dungeons. So pull out your glaives. Oh, they and your... scale up today. They sure do. Oh, yeah. oh my thunder fury. Or or down. You know, like if you had the glaives from Illidan, they'd scale down from Black Temple to you know work in yeah. the oh, manatees or whatever. Yeah, I like that cool. a lot. Good plan. That's pretty good. Um, my favorite thing about this patch is probably the adventure journal. It's uh, awesome. I think they've needed this for a I long do time. I like it. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, it's like there's a lot of times where and you know maybe they listen to the show where we <laughs> we said we logged in and we were like, what, what should I, I do? do? Yeah, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to do right now. And now there's just something I can open up and hey, See, okay, I'll do I this. I think it's cool, but I'd like it to be a little bit more like crabby, you know, the clippy mm, thing. Yeah. It's all like, hey, looks like you're spending a lot of time in your garrison. Yeah. How about you go out into the real world? That'd the be problem right. is, is it's just stuck in the bottom bar. I want it to. I want it to do stuff for me. Would it, you want, I want it to, to have pop open for you and stuff? Yeah, well, just like yeah. little notifications, maybe saying like, "Oh, sure. some of your friends have just done this. You should join them." Here, well, let's, let's see what it says. Next, you, uh, iteration. You log in. Like there's the little crab, and you say, "It says hi," or I say, "I don't know which faction I'd like to join," and it says horde side. See, it even have Greg's yep. voice. A little Greg's, Greg's voice, voice just doing it. Yeah, I and like that it. causes massive imbalance as a legion of new people <laughs> all roll horde. And he's Actually, a... the horde becomes the new faction. Yeah, it would, and you kill the horde. It would be weird hiring from all uh, hiring him for all your voice work too, because he's at. That Riot would be games. good. No, I think that would be fun. Yeah. I'm sure they're still friends. I'm I'm 100 sure they are, but boy, you gotta wonder. You know, could you have a guy like Greg come back and do anything? I don't think they'd ever do that. I think I think as long as he joined the Screen Actors Guild, mm. um, he'd be allowed to do the voices. Right, fair enough. I like that. Uh, you can finally finish your ring quest. Uh, so that's the thing Ooh. we knew was coming. In quest for the wing quest. Yeah, that's right. 6.2 also has 26 new pets, 20 mounts, 18 new toys, new heirlooms, including an intellect So plate. when did you finish the legendary quest in Pandaria? Wasn't that in the last patch with uh, Garrosh? Uh, yeah. 
Oh, so you're so, so you still have this. Now? You still have this theory. Me, Scott. Yeah, you, see, you, you really think that this is the last? I I don't that we're gonna want get. it to be, and I think yeah. it shouldn't be. Because... It would be the quickest expansion exactly. in the history of this now, game. Now that's the thing. So if then at Gamescom they turn around and say, "Yeah, we're not announcing a new D3. We're announcing a new WoW expansion, and it's going to be out the week after BlizzCon or something to that effect," then WoW, okay, I'm on board. Right. But obviously, they've always said they wanted to do these quicker. And they've never done them quicker. But the Team 2 has also never been bigger. So either they're building the next expansion and polishing it and iterating it and blizzarding the heck out of it beyond what they probably need to, or we're getting it sooner. Could be. Or there's another patch. Could be. I, um, there are theories all over the place, but the prominent one is that there will be a 6.4 or a 6.3.5. Really? Yeah, so that there's more than even just this next one. So I don't know what... Uh, there's a lot of convoluted reasons why people think that's true, uh, story-wise and otherwise, but... I think Ashara, next expansion. You think so? Yeah. Maybe. And we probably won't hear about it till BlizzCon, but I'd like to hear about it. Uh, also, it's important to note, 6.2 did not include... the. Uh, this is not the flying patch, but 6.2X will include the flying patch, and that should be yeah. probably the very next thing they put in. Uh, but you have so time, now. time now to wrap up with all the new things. exactly and that adventure mm -hmm. journal is is great for that by the way because that's it tells you all the crap you can be doing in, in any given zone and a lot of that stuff is right along uh, side that but what i'd like to do though is i'd like to like tick saying i'd like to be able to fly and then it should say okay well in six two point x yeah here's what you gotta do to these get are the fly. things you need yeah. to do here's your here's your kind of task list right. and then it populates yeah, that's there's so much more you could do with it. But you'd have to do it for everything, though. You'd have to say. But yeah, no, why not? Exactly. Well, if they yeah, know, it's, you could have them user created, and you could just have a list of like things to do in WoW, and it might be like, oh, I'd really like to have um, that cool trinket that turns you into a thing. Oh well, for that, you've got to complete the following objectives. We recommend you start here. Yeah, you know, there's guides all over WoWhead as to how to do stuff. Right. If they put those in game and stopped being so insistent on controlling every tiny facet of everything. You know, if they just let it and opened it up to the community to create content and story or tasks or something, that would change this game beyond anything. Right. And that would be amazing. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of agree. Um, but I do like... like you I like... like, you know, GURP scenic tour of, you know, um, <laughs> Thousand Needles. Yeah. And it'd be like, you know, go to this place. If you look down, look, there's well, a dead troll. And the, troll nice, in the there. nice thing too There'd is, there'd definitely it's... be some trolling ones. Well, there of course there would yeah. be, but they wouldn't but have to. But then you get voted up and down like Reddit. Right, and, and they and they wouldn't have to do the job, the work. Like Blizzard would just give you the mechanism, and I can exactly. guarantee a thousand billion people would step up right, to the Blizzard, plate. Put Reddit into the game. Oh, good lord! Why dude. Not? Now that you <laughs> say it, that, now that wait, now that Dill says it that way, I'm a little frightened. By the way, no, that but sounds. that's it. So you put it in, just and you, you know, yeah. you give them limited tools in terms of like waypoints or quests uh -huh. or zone markers yeah, but then so you they'll... can't just write some hateful you know hate speech so you can't go in there and talk about you can't do kotaku in action inside but of exactly. warcraft <laughs> you could have for example you know do you want to get you know classic warrior armor set okay well you've got to go to scholomance you've got to take out this guy you've got to go to stratholm sure. kill that guy yeah. you know but it presents it to you in like a checklist or something like that and so then it will show you you can basically set your own in-game cheese or notifications that is what the adventure journal should do yeah but what if it says okay just go with me here it says step yep. one go to this dungeon step two kill this boss step three pick up his remains step four i like it when ladies pee on me <laughs> but that's the thing you don't let them do that you let uh -huh. people pick from the context menu so you don't have the ability to put in about liking ladies pee on you unless it. I mean, I imagine <laughs> unless be that's a, in a the game somewhere. Blessed it's Thunder probably Fury, in the game you know, somewhere. Yeah. There would be Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker, a million times followed by Dirge. <laughs> yeah. But past that, you know, you could do it, and you just you know keep running this. This is the drop chance. I don't know. I just think it would be fun to have the ability, and then to help new players. Like, literally, then, you don't have a tutorial. It's in-game. It's just like, I'll give hey, you this, start. Terpster. Mm. What you're describing this. is super cool. And It'll never happen. Also <laughs> super difficult to program and probably never going to happen. Yeah. But, yes, yeah. I agree that it would be awesome. I though. agree, too. I reckon if they can make selfies in WoW, they can do this. <laughs> this is see, this is the same thing that I'm doing in, on, on our little Hearthstone podcast where I'm like, 
give me a sandbox mode. Yeah. Give me a mode where I can go in and say, okay, each person has 70 health, and each person gets to select from priest, warlock, and mage cards but as well as whatever. But they can't do that give, you know. because that then means that they can't charge us for those things later on, like sure. the mode when you, you play that. Whereas this doesn't take away anything. This is just basically putting in... No, I know, but I'm just, we're both asking for things that are actually kind of incredibly hard to make. That's yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think so. I would make this on a, on a weekend, but I'm busy. So oh, I'm okay. asking Blizzard <laughs> to do it on my behalf. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because, you know, again, what are they up to at the moment? Yeah, They're nothing, right? flying back in the game, or aren't they? Making selfie know. cams, yeah. cams, exactly. Yeah, if, I didn't have to, if I didn't have to do the 18 on Sunday, then, um, yeah, I'd I know what I know what the it. next thing's going to be from them. Let's not lie. It's going to be 6.3 selfie stick update oh, and the selfie Lord. camera now is further that away from the character please no, don't stick. please don't you, know? you can't use and it at disneyland though exactly no exactly you're not gonna be allowed at disneyland <laughs> and uh that's obviously that will get patched into 6.3 x because everyone will complain yeah. about well, how whoa what the hell blizzard can't use it and they're like sorry there's some bugs we have to fix <laughs> yeah um, but i think that that would make the adventure journal something blizzard so this feels like more. something right. game company made sure. it doesn't feel like something blizzard made right right i'm with you uh there you go. i think i'm with you uh and also one final note before we move on master plan got updated so now everyone can comfortably use their garrisons again because man is that a slog if you don't have master plan Woo! When you've uh, got, like, have you so, noticed so like the ship stuff doesn't really work with it yet right no nope. the update yeah. uh well i haven't t tested the latest update but as far as i know no because it's got that whole drag and drop ship you got a drag and drop ships but yeah. you know i feel like they're gonna have that fixed pretty yeah, soon someone, will, someone, someone will have a yeah i've yeah. tried um garrison mission mission manager as well and garrison commander and there's a couple of different ones out there yeah. uh master plan though is still really good it's still really good yeah and that that he it was a bit of work to catch up but he got it and now it's fine so you can go go check your it. missions uh we it's not a nightmare anymore uh let's see here let's talk about some hearthstone stuff what's this banana brawl thing happening happening is this part of the tavern no, 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 have you done any of the brawls yet, i haven't even touched the brawl before brawls. before we Why? you get a free it, pack I'm... for just doing it oh really it's constructed with <laughs> you bananas. need to get in there dude. play All tempo right. mage and All you'll right. win okay um Right, I have some very, very important news. Oh, beep, 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 beep. Wait, hold on. I got a theme, a new theme for your breaking news. Here's a new one. Okay. Here you go. Here go. Um... This festive season, make sure you're shopping at Frog Pants. Um, no, um, I went 12 wins in arena for my first yeah. ever time. Whoa. I finally did it. I nice. finally did it. All right, what class did you would, It was did you Paladin. Play? I had three true silver champions. Of course. Four blessings of kings. Uh -huh. um, and uh, my favorite win was a, was a blessing of king, uh, blessed champion on a raging worgen. Um, and I basically like and then one you swung twice. It yeah. was exactly. Right. It was. It was just something else. So, yeah. uh, so the verdict so, yeah. on uh, that's great. By the way, congratulations. Thank you very much. The verdict on this tavern brawl thing. I, I, it seemed like there was a lot of speculation leading in, and now everyone loves it. Am I hearing that right? No, from no, 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 everyone loves no. it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm underwhelmed. I'll say that. Yeah, no. uh, yeah exactly. And that's fine because I think it's still a really cool thing. Um, there's there's lots and and it's something that people can look forward to every week and I like that and there's different modes going to change every week and I think that's cool. Um, however, we're always going to be stuck with whatever they give us that week. And Is it always so, going to be free? Uh, well, they said it's going to be free. I'd never heard anything about always, but you know they said it's free. Uh, the the reward is a pack, which is a, it's great. It's an original pack too. It's a classic pack, so it's great for new players who you know Arena just gives you GVG packs now. So to get classic packs was a little bit tough without paying money. So it does actually, like, you know, I was able to get some classic packs on my EU account, which was a free-to-play account. So that's all really great, and that's all really good. But it is a little, like, I, I'm not finding very much replayability with it so far. Like, I log in, I play five to six games of it, and then I'm kind of done. Yeah. Um, this week has been a little bit better because you can actually try out some different stuff. So, you know, Tempo Mages, like Terpster said, is clearly the best. Because essentially, every time one of your guys dies, you get a, a banana card, spell. which does something. <laughs> it's a spell. Yeah. Uh, so, and then also, like, Mage has things like uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is a two-mana card. For, is a 3-2. And it makes all your spells cost one less. So then all the bananas become free. 
So there's like a lot of things you can do with yeah. Mate get two flame good. wakers on the board with yeah. a sorcerer's apprentice. And then cast eight you can bananas. like exactly. Then you can one turn kill um, archmage Antonidas. Uh, you just get infinite fireballs. You turn all um, your into fireballs. Yeah. And uh, also like uh, mana worms just uh, become super OP. Sure. Um, and it, and it is a bit RNG because if you get a load of deviant bananas, they're just not as good. But still, there's ways around it. Um, but I also I found like there's other cool week, things though. though. You, you, have you tried? Uh, uh warrior charge mana mana addict no OTK. oh wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can see that work that was yeah. pretty fun and then uh <laughs> of course zoo is pretty good because you just play so many creatures and you just get a lot of bananas and buff them all so there's other ways to do it but and but, then people but, are playing yeah. face hunter because yeah. they just ignore just, your board and exactly just that's it. that's the way i won first was i just thought oh, i'll just make face hunter and it yeah. does work the sure. problem I so first week I really enjoyed it because it felt like planeswalkers. It felt like um Magic the Gathering where you have just these super OP cards and everything's crazy and it feels like, oh man, this is this is something special. Um this week feels like constructed with like an added constructed with bananas, know. yeah. And, uh, and that's is. and that's what it is. And yeah. that to me just doesn't feel as inspiring. Um and I, I think I would be okay with it were it not for the fact that it tracks your wins, which to me then says that they're saying like, hey, yeah, play it again. And I'm like, well, it doesn't, I don't think I want to play it again. Sure. And it just doesn't well, right feel now, like... it doesn't do anything how many, how many wins you get. Exactly, and that's it, it feels you. pointless. Yeah. And that's, so I, I'd say take the counter out. It doesn't yeah. track how many wins I have on heroic modes in uh, adventures or in adventures in any way. And this feels like just an adventure, but it gives me a pack. And it's True. like, you know, I, I came yeah. away from getting 12 wins um, in my arena and got, what did I get? I got like 260 gold. Yeah, you get a lot two, of rewards. Two gold that, cards. Yeah. Well, it was okay. But even then, I kind of feel like I doubt I'm going to do that again, or at least not anytime soon. I would have loved the card back or something. If they, you know, card backs for everything. Well, they, so they don't have, which is kind of weird. And you're bringing up an interesting thing, too, is that for arena players, your reward is basically the, the cards, the dust, the gold. But. For getting 12 wins, like if you go to Legend and Constructed, you get a card back and, mm. you know, you're a legendary player now. 12 wins is kind of the legend for Arena, right? Exactly, like that is yeah. the top of the, that's the most you can get. Uh, but you get no special reward. Not only that, but your uh, your wins don't count towards your golden characters. So yep. there's like kind of a lack of um, fun, out, you know, fun rewarding rewards, rewarding rewards. Outside of just like increasing your your card pool, right? But that's why I kind of feel like card backs are accepted as like they're a cool thing to have and to work towards, yeah. and it's nice to have them. And Blizzard have said already, yeah, we don't expect you to be able to get them all because hey, we've signed a deal with Samsung, you're going to get one if you have a Galaxy phone. Um, it's like oh yay, um, but I kind of feel like there should be more because mm -hmm. they they're not that hard. The community make a load of them, and they look great. But also an artist, it shouldn't take that long to make a card. Um, so making them for for brawls and getting like you know, ten consecutive brawl wins. I, I would like that, yeah, brawl. because I would play more if they said if you get twenty wins for whatever during this brawl, then you get mm. this special brawl card back or something like that. Yeah, exactly. That I'd would love be to awesome. Have like a banana themed card back. That'd yeah. be really cool. And yeah. I would go through this mode and try it out different ways and try and find fun. But for me, it's just like I played it and I played it. You know, I played it like three, four times, um, and that was enough for me. Yeah, and I, I think I, a lot of fine. people are doing that. A lot of people are going in and they're playing once to get their pack, and once they get their win, they're out, and they don't go back to it. And to me, that's why I feel, I feel like it's underwhelming, because if you really made like a, a fantastic new feature, it would be something that I would just want to play. And I, I feel like this kind of a sandboxy tournament uh, lobby type thing, which is what I was kind of envisioning, was something that was going to have a ton of replay value for me. Mm -hmm. And this kind of hasn't done that. And and I've got a lot of grief for it on the Angry Chicken because, you know, I'm I'm crapping all over the tavern brawls, apparently, even though I'm just giving, like, an honest opinion that's actually, oh, yeah, I think, yeah. kind of not super in either direction. Uh, think, and everyone's, I, like, yeah. going, like, oh, stop, like, being so negative about brawls. I'm like, <laughs> but I think Hearthstone is very, very guilty for this in that Hearthstone sure. drip feeds content and that content is never enough and i don't know if it ever can be enough mm -hmm. i think there's ways to like again by adding some form of reward for replayability like with adventure modes they give you a wing a week and that wing will last you an hour and so sure. for the rest of that week it's like we'll play something else do some constructed do some arena and it's like but you've spent a lot of time making this arena you know this uh uh this uh, adventure 
maybe if you just added in some other meta achievement or something, then there's more game that could be had and could be, you know, if people want to play more of that, then they don't necessarily yeah. just, you know, well, go up against they're, nothing. They're lords of progression. They understand it better than anyone, and it's always surprising to me to hear that a new feature in any of their games... Uh, like lacks progression. Lacks that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is a little bit weird because... But uh, but also, you know, Team 5 is separated from the... Re like, they're not... They're not necessarily all coming from the same... Like, they, yes, they're the same company, and yes, there's some obviously some crossover. But these guys are making a card game. Card games generally tend to work completely differently. But I do think that they could benefit quite a bit from taking some of the historically successful things Blizzard has done with progression and apply them to a card game. And that's, I think, what they're... What they're missing in some of this stuff, yeah. so it's cool to hear that you kind of agree with me, Terpster. Because I, mm. you know, I mean, look, you, you, you. I think when you first started playing, were maybe more in the casual boat, but the guy who played oh, a yeah. lot, like yeah. the, the the guy who played casually a lot, right? Yeah. And that to me is like what like some people are making the argument that I don't understand why Tavern Brawl is so great because I'm not casual enough. And you know, I think I'm actually fairly casual with this game. I think I like to play like weird fun decks. I like to do all kinds of stuff. Yes, I play it a lot, and I you know, keep up with a lot of stuff. Yeah, but going anybody on. who's seen your stream knows that you're not like. No, I'm not in there tryharding no. every single night, and I'm not trying to like just grind to to legend just for the sake of that or whatever. Like, I'm not trying to do any of that stuff. Right. I'd say I'm a fairly casual player, and I was underwhelmed with this stuff. Sure. And so, you know, I think that some people are thinking that being underwhelmed with this feature means that you're just like some, you know, some like anti-casual guy who's trying to ruin everyone else's fun right. yeah. and it's just you know just this is just Blue my opinion hits. about the whole thing yeah sure. it's just well the night you three booted was really special um... <laughs> see that that was i try hard about <laughs> that one yeah i roped every turn getting those third boots yeah. you know that was yeah. weirdly satisfying to watch <laughs> uh there's also uh that card back mountain is in heroes now so if you had 100 wins which is in... the coolest mount it's pretty, ever. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, awesome pretty cool. it's great by the way you get this is if you can't get why is that not in, in well? hearthstone yeah, I know, right? But if you can't get Legend in Hearthstone, you can get Legend in Heroes yeah. uh, by just be getting to level 9 with whatever hero you're using that mount with. Correct. Because yeah. then you get to use that Legend skin. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. It's <laughs> yeah. re really cool. And if you've unlocked all your tents for you, whatever hero you're playing, let's say I'm playing Thrall at level 12, uh, the tents aren't just color changes to the card. It's actual changes to the back. Yeah, so, changes the card back, yeah. So you get the Pandaria one, you get the Nexus one, and you get the... I forget the other one. Crap. It's the Legend one is the last one. Is that the last one? Yeah. You, you get, like, the ba the basic card back is the first one. So it's, like, the actual first card back you ever get in Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is... Um, yeah, I think it is the pa it's the Pandaria one, maybe? I, I can't Something remember Something like now. that. Uh, but then, yeah, the third one is the Legend card back. Like, that's what you get for getting Legendary. Watching, like, a Nubarak fly around on that thing, or whoever it was I saw the other <laughs> That's day. who I've been playing a lot. By the way, Scott, we got to get some practice in, man. Yeah, I know. we got teams. Oh, by the way, I'm told, uh, so this just in for Heroes Update. Uh, boop, boop. The, uh, <laughs> our Heroes of the Pants tournament now has four, maybe three team slots left. So if you were oh. dragging your feet and you and you thought, oh, I got plenty of time, turns out you don't. You got to get in now. So our team slots are filling up. We're going with 32 for this initial tournament. It's all for fun.